let's talk about uh, the complete saga of Joss Whedon. Because I... Uh, yeah, exactly. What's this, right? So Joss Whedon is currently in the news again because all of the cast of Buffy have come out in essentially against him. And uh, I'm not here to defend him, but I am here to explain what's happened because I used to be a really big fan of Buffy. I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's really good. Good watching. Get stoned when I was in university. Watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Good stuff, right? Play video games. Good fun times. Uh, but one of the one of the actresses, don't laugh, it's good. No, I'm just laughing at like how simple life used to be. It used to be wonderful. <laughs> it used to be great. Life used to be fun. You used to be able to enjoy yourself. But anyway, Charisma Carpenter played... Um, oh, God, I can't even remember the name of the character now. It's been a few years since I've watched it. But she played one of the one of the main characters on the show. And she came out and tweeted this, this statement, along with, I stand with Ray Fisher. Uh, my truth as well. And... Um, so what, Josh has been accused of rape or something? No, actually. Uh, we'll get to we'll get that's the one thing he's actually not being accused of. And as a male feminist, that really marks him out as something strange and unique. <laughs> uh he's actually not. But 180,000 likes. You see, this this went very far on Twitter. Uh, but the question is so who is Ray Fisher, right? So in 2020, uh Ray Fisher is a a, a, a an actor who is playing someone on the Justice League and he's black. If we can go to the next one, please, John, so we can see it. Um and so this and this opens up allegations of racism uh, against Joss Whedon. So uh, he spoke up about issues working with Joss Whedon in 2017, uh, including accusations that a replacement director, uh, that jo Joss Whedon was gross, abusive, unprofessional, and completely unacceptable in his treatment of the cast and crew. Uh, but he never went into detail, and now he's come out, and last year he came out with some detail, uh, letting us know. Um, but he also said that the erasure of people of colour from the 2017 theatrical version of Justice League was neither accident nor coincidence. That's right. Hollywood hates minorities. Which is why it's replacing all of the white people in all of the new things with minorities. Hmm. Cordelia Chase. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Cord Cordelia was actually a really great character because she was a massive bitch. Uh, and it was really amusing. But anyway. Don't swear. Is that a swear word? Yes. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, okay. But anyway. So um, he uh, he was upset that Whedon's reshoots had reduced screen time and cut performances for multiple actors of colour. Uh, he also said he was made aware of blatantly racist conversations that occurred and realised that the notes I ended up getting from the reshoots were just a coded version of the racist things he was saying behind closed doors with the other executives. Race was just one of the issues with the reshoot process. There were massive blow-ups, threats, coercion, taunting, unsafe work conditions, belittling and gaslighting like you wouldn't believe. Uh, Jeff Johns made a veiled threat to my career uh, during the LA reshoots. Multiple sources have informed me that Joss threatened the career of another person associated with the production. Toby was made aware and tried to cover for Whedon rather than deal with the abuse. Now, again, I have absolutely no idea whether any of this is true. Um, I don't think that Joss Whedon is exactly a paragon of virtue, so I'm definitely not going to rule out that this could be true. But I find it strange that, like... Joss Whedon is the person being alleged to be a racist and misogynist, given how much time he has spent on social media being an activist against racism and misogyny. Well, <sighs> virtue signaling about it. Yeah, I know, right? So It's always the way. But again, that's why it's so surprising that he's not being accused of rape. Uh, Charisma Carpenter uh, came out, and her allegations are very interesting, right? So I'm just going to quote from a bit of it. Now, the, it, the, this is actually a surprisingly powerful statement. I don't know why my nose is running today, but sorry. Am I this is actually a surprisingly powerful statement, right? So she says, For two decades I've held my tongue and even made excuses for certain events that traumatized me to this day. Joss Whedon abused his power on numerous occasions while working on the sets of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. Uh, notice that, abused his power, right? Uh, while, he, while he found his misconduct amusing, it only served to intensify my performance anxiety, disempower me, and alienate me from my peers. Disturbing incidents triggered a chronic physical condition from which I still suffer. It is with a beating heavy heart I say I coped in isolation and at times destructively. Last summer, when Ray Fisher publicly accused Joss of abusive and unprofessional behaviour, uh, it gutted me. Joss has a history of being casually cruel. He has created a hostile and toxic work environment since his early career. I know because I exp experienced it firsthand repeatedly. Like his ongoing passive-aggressive threats to fire me, which wreaks havoc on a young actor's self-esteem. Doubtless it does. He called me fat to my colleagues when I was four months pregnant, uh, weighing 126 pounds. He was mean and biting and disparaging about others openly, and he often played favourites, pitting what people against one another to compete and vie for his attention and approval. So he sounds like uh, Louis the... Um, 14th the palace of versailles 
It's very interesting. Why? What, what would he do? Well, exactly that. Exactly that. He did exactly that with the aristocrats. He made the he he got them all uh, in the uh, complex of Versailles, and then got them to vie for his attention against one another, which made essentially rebellion impossible because they couldn't get together because they need to get anything they need to go through him and to go through him they needed like to ingratiate themselves through his court and uh, and so it, essentially Joss jo seems to be running his sets like a French autocratic king um he called me in for a sit-down meeting to interrogate and berate me regarding a rosary tattoo I got to help me feel more spiritually grounded in an increasingly volatile work climate that affected me physically. Joss intentionally refused multiple calls from my agents, making it impossible to connect with him to tell him the news that I was pregnant. Finally, once Joss was apprised of the situation, he requested a meeting with me. In that closed-door meeting, he asked if I was going to keep it and manipulatively weaponized my womanhood and faith against me. So it sounds like Joss was trying to encourage her to get an abortion, which she, as a Catholic, didn't want to do. Uh, he proceeded well, to... It's also actually criminal in the UK to do such a thing in a work environment. Well, probably. So I imagine it actually is in the US as well. Yeah. Don't get pregnant, though, Callum. <sighs> Make me. I can't... Have... <laughs> That's <laughs> probably some sort of crime. Uh, he proceeded <laughs> to attack my character, mock my religious beliefs, accuse me of sabotaging the show, and then unceremoniously fired me following the season once I gave birth. Back then, I felt powerless and alone with no other option. I swallowed the mistreatment and carried on. Um, uh, unfortunately, all this was happening during the mo most wonderful time in new motherhood. All that promise and joy sucked out, and Joss was the vampire. There you go. Despite the harassment, a part of me... Again, she's calling this harassment now, which I don't... I mean, maybe it is, but... A part of me still sought his validation. I made excuses for his behaviour and repressed my own pain. I have even stated publicly at conventions that I'd work with him again. Only recently, after years of therapy and a wake-up call from the Time's Up movement, do I understand the complexities of this demoralised thinking. It is impossible to understand the psyche without enduring the abuse. Our society and industry vilify the victims and glorify the abusers for their accomplishments. The onus is on the abused with the expectation to accept and adapt to be employable. No accountability on the transgressor who sails on unscathed, Unre uh, unrepentant and remorseless these memories have weighed on my soul like bricks for nearly half of my life I wish I'd said something sooner I wish I had the composure and courage all those years ago but I muted myself um with tears welling, I feel an overwhelming sense of responsibility to Ray and others for remaining private about my experience with Joss and suffering the suffering it has caused me. It is abundantly evident that Joss has persisted in his harmful actions, continuing to create a wreckage in the wake. My hope now, by finally coming forward with about these experiences, is to create a space for the healing of others who I know have experienced similar abuses of power. So this is the Time's Up movement in action. Hmm. I mean, to be honest with you, I've got absolutely no sympathy for Hollywood. And they probably get what they deserve, and they probably deserve everything that they get. Most of this, I don't, I'm not sure I care about anyway. The only thing in there that I think is actually egregious is him suggesting that she ought to get an abortion. Yeah. Um, and also probably criminal, for for good reason. Like you can't just bully your employees into having abortions. Probably not in California. I don't know. I, I I'm surprised hope, it's not mandatory. In I would hope be part of their Equality Act because I mean it's they, in our. They've probably repealed that by now. Yeah, anyway, well. right. The point. The the point is, it, it's probably true that Joss Whedon had created some kind of toxic work environment. Um, but this is the male feminists always do. The, yeah, those male feminists, right? And uh, and the cast of Buffy have effectively come out in one voice against Joss Whedon. Uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar says, uh, "This is Buffy herself." Says, "While I am proud to have my name associated with Buffy Summers, I don't want to be forever associated with the name Joss Whedon." The problem there is that Joss Whedon will forever be associated with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So yikes, uh, Michelle Trachenberg. Um, uh, she, and the, one, uh, the funny thing about her statement, though, is she's like, I am more focused on raising my family and surviving a pandemic currently, so we'll be not making further comments at this time. But I stand with all survivors and abuse, and I'm proud of them speaking out. Literally a, I really don't want to be involved in this. This is, you know, here's, here's my political statement. Goodbye. Close the door. <laughs> you know? um, and then you've got the other ones like Michelle Trackenberg uh, saying, you know, I'm brave enough to, now as a 35-year-old woman to repost this because this must be known as a teenager with his not appropriate behavior, very not appropriate. But what are you actually alleging here? Uh, there was you know, various others um, that all had come out essentially saying the same thing. I mean, one, one of them was um, the guy, a guy called James Masters who played Spike. Who was a, Spike was a very popular character on the show because Spike was um, a lunatic and he was funny. Uh, and he says... Uh, he uh, was having an argument with Whedon 
He says, I came along and I wasn't designed to be a romantic character, but then the audience reacted that way to it. And I remember Whedon backed me up against the wall one day and he just said, I don't care how popular you are, kid. You're dead. You hear me? Dead. Dead. Uh, Joss himself has not commented on these latest allegations. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, the audience liked him, so he started threatening him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. Why okay. would he do that? Like, he wasn't designed to be a romantic character. I mean, Spike wasn't meant to but he the i and it's clear but the in in the in the story of the series spike ends up having a redemption arc and and becomes a good guy who sacrifices himself at the end um which you know is a good story to be honest it's a good tale um i don't know why just would have been upset by the fact that that but who knows it could have been jealousy yeah that's that's right um but uh anthony head who played um the old school teacher um giles uh he uh, he went on um, this morning with Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby, and uh, he admitted he had no idea what was going on. He had no idea any of this was happening. It's like, right, okay. Yeah. So you worked with them closely, day in, day out for years, and you never saw any of this. Uh, he says, I've been up most of the night running through my memories thinking, what did I miss? This is not a man saying, I didn't see it, so it didn't happen. I'm gutted, seriously gutted, because one of my memories, my fondest memory, was the fact that Buffy was so empowering, not just with the words in the script, but the family feel of the show. Uh, and he uh, he feels let down. Uh, he, he was like, I was sort of a father figure, because he was like a generation older than the rest of the cast. Uh, I would hope that someone would come to me and say, I'm struggling, I'd say, horrible conversation and uh you know how how long was this going on there are ups and downs highs and lows uh, people have tempers everyone has a temper i've heard people shout at the crew we've all heard directors shouting and lead actors shouting at one of the crew for not wearing a mask what i'm saying is there are highs and lows but of course as ping news point out this appears to go beyond what regular highs and lows should be um so yeah the 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 cast are essentially claiming it happened one of them are like i didn't know about any of this and uh, so draw from that the conclusions you want. But I think the funny thing about this is to go through Joss Whedon's history a bit, because Joss Whedon is essentially like king feminist. Like this is from back in 2007. I dug this up from, right? The uh, And like, you've got to understand, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it wasn't overtly ideological, right? It was, it was very... Um, well told as a story the characters are very relatable and likable uh, but the if if you to conduct like a meta-analysis of buffy the vampire slayer it's very clearly a feminist show and that was the point of it um but anyway uh joss whedon back in 2007 as you can see the young young picture they're having scrolled down but look how look how baby faced he looks there uh, that's that's presumably before he's terrorized his cast and crew um but he was prompted by the horrific honor killing of a of a kurdish teenager who was stoned and kicked to death uh, to to go and write various blog posts and he he believed after he came out of university that uh, men have something called womb envy they envy women because they can't carry children and uh, as a as a father and husband that's not true josh uh, josh the, the, i i don't think men have womb envy i think in fact that they have something called womb relief. Relief that they don't have a womb and don't have to give birth. Uh, but uh, he's uh, what I love about this article, right? From 2007, this sounds so quaint. I mean, listen to this. I'm sure the irony of a man writing a feminist essay is not lost on some of you. <laughs> oh, how naive does that sound? Like, But then if you believe in a world that's truly equal, it shouldn't surprise you that a man could be a feminist or a woman could be a sexist. If anything deserves to be beaten and buried, it's the man-hating lesbian myth. It's not doing us any favours. Is it a myth? Is it a myth? Uh, it's no longer enough to be a decent person, says Joss. It's no longer enough to shake our heads and make concerned grimaces at the news. True enlightened activism is the only thing that can save humanity from itself true enlightened activism feminist activism and this is a position that he has not shaken obviously uh, he's been insufferable on social media since time immemorial uh, and so this is an example just in 2015 where he's declaring the comic book movie industry to be sexist this is when he was the director of uh, avengers age of ultron uh, which he got in lots of trouble for, which we'll talk about in a minute, in fact. Uh, he says, There is a genuine, recalcitrant, intractable sexism and old-fashioned, quiet misogyny that goes on. You hear, oh, female superheroes. They don't work because of those two bad ones that were made eight years ago. There's always an excuse. Uh, Whedon, whose own Wonder Woman project at Warner Brothers was famously cancelled after seven, several years of development, went on to then praise The Hunger Games as proof that female-led blockbusters could be a bankable prospect. Uh, and so, yeah. 
he's always been an advocate for this. And so it was really funny in 2015 when he got in real trouble over the portrayal of Black Widow in this film. Now, I haven't, I don't watch superhero movies. Isn't Black Widow the completely useless one that can, like, fire a bow and arrow like Robin Hood and that's it? Many, useless in many different ways. Oh, okay. And that's how she got, so she, she really... <laughs> Her superpower is being useless. After Whedon abandoned Twitter. <laughs> um, basically, so what, what happened is um, Joss Whedon got bullied off Twitter because the, the character of Black Widow um, had gone through, after we you, know, you get to hear about her secret backstory, as a training as a cold-blooded spy, and uh, was required to undergo forced sterilization. And this really upset the feminists on Twitter. What? Really upset them. Well, I mean, think about it, right? If if being a woman requires motherhood and forced sterilization is a, a breaking of that and makes her feel not like a woman, then who are you also saying are not women? Those who can't have children. There we go. But the thing is, uh, and the, the, the thing I find really interesting about this is that this is actually a really complex and detailed character arc for a character like this, right? Um... But uh, but yeah, the, the way that the uh, SJWs are freaking out about it uh, was that instead of an assassin constantly struggling with moral lines she didn't know existed, we got a woman who feels incomplete because she can't have babies. You know what my final test was in Red Room? They sterilized me. It was one of the, le the least things to worry about. You think the, you're the only monster on the team. It's not only the loss of innocence, though killing, uh, it's not the loss of innocence through killing or being forced to live a life of betraying people. The greatest loss is motherhood. That's why she's a monster like the Hulk. Poor Black Widow. She leaned in and where did it get her? She's a lonely, incomplete monster. <laughs> no wonder the feminists felt personally attacked, right? Mm. We resemble that remark. <laughs> so, as, as uh, jo Joss has always managed it's to put. Like incredibly transphobic. It's not, well, that's the it's point. Brush over that. <clears throat> but in 2015, that was less of a concern. If that had come out yeah. now, then that would be the primary. That would concern. be the primary thing. But the, the idea of like elderly feminists being uh, yeah. hurtful of this comment would be completely ignored. Exactly. And uh, the the it, even then, you did get the the trans activists who were saying, "Well, hang on a second. Are you saying that being a you know motherhood is an essential part of womanhood?" And it's like. Anyway, uh, so in 2017, uh, in 2016, Joss Whedon got divorced from his wife. Uh, they they separated in 2012, and it was because he had been having affairs with almost everyone, it seems. Uh, and his ex-wife just came out and claimed that his feminism was a cover for his bad behavior, which is like, oof, this is a blog that she wrote. Yeah, but what else is it new? Yeah, Being exactly, a male feminist yeah. is a cover for sexual deviancy. Okay. But again, in Joss Whedon's defense, he's probably the only male feminist who isn't being accused of sexual assault. So good for him. Points for him. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, point points for having consensual affairs behind your wife's back. As a male feminist, that's a real achievement. Uh, he used his relationship with me as a shield, so no one would question his relationships with other women or scrutinize his writing as anything other than feminist. Uh, she she goes on to detail this quite a lot and how he um, gaslighted her throughout their relationship, and maybe he did. Like I I don't find this to be implausible, to be honest. Um, but it was on the set of Buffy he decided to have his first secret affair. Fifteen years later, when he was done with our marriage and finally ready to tell the truth, he wrote me, When I was running Buffy, I was surrounded by beautiful, needy, aggressive young women. I felt like I had a disease, like something from a Greek myth. Suddenly, I am a powerful producer and the world is laid out at my feet and I can't touch it. But he did touch it. He said he understood. I would have to lie or conceal some part of the truth for the rest of my life. And anyway. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's... That's the story of pretty uh, amusing, to be honest. In my in my opinion, this I, is this is what you get. I mean, I find that weird. Like, it, it's not just a, a left wing thing either. Like, we're, we're making fun of the male feminist part here. Yeah, but I, I suppose the the right wing equivalent would be like the Republicans, the from, gay preacher who ends up having sex with loads of men in yeah, a bathhouse. Yeah. yeah, but like the you know homosexuality is a sin and it must be mm -hmm. made criminal. And in his yeah. you know in his weekends he's down in cock like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Um, 
but I, why? Like, why would you engage well, in this? I, 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 for the, presumably the same reasons, as in, you know, oh, I'm a feminist. I think that we should be progressive and forward thinking. Also, I'm going to treat all of the women around me like like dirt. I'm going to lie and gaslight to my wife. I, I'm, you know, it's it it's got to be the same sort of thing. And he he blames himself becoming uh, blames. Maybe I should say credits himself becoming a feminist uh, from his mother. And it's like, okay, well, then I guess you need to sit down and have a conversation with a therapist about the relationship you have with your mother, don't you, Josh? (laughs) 